I'm sharing with you my biggest money regrets so you won't have to go through it yourself. You'd be surprised that it's not the most extravagant things, but it's actually the little things here and there that we may often overlook. What's up guys? It's Nick. Welcome back to my channel where I empower you to take on adulting like a boss. So I've talked about my best purchases of 2020 and also what I spend in a month and I was super honest about that. But now, I want to be real with you guys and share those times when I could have been smarter with my purchases and money habits. You know, those small, seemingly insignificant things that get piled up over time and then they just sneak up on you and you realize it has wasted your time and savings? That one. Because I hope you don't end up making these same regrets, so I'm laying it all out in the open. Speaking of, I also don't want you to regret missing out on my 5-day live training at the Sweet Dead Proof Live Bootcamp. This is where I'm handing over to you the ultimate step-by-step -step blueprint to kickstart your personal finance journey and have those building blocks and actionable timelines to have your own six-figure emergency fund in your 20s, but also still enjoying life to the fullest and ultimately having the freedom to live life on your terms. I'm closing registration in two days, so this is the final call Final reminder, your last chance you guys to join me in this bootcamp. So make sure you register at bootcamp.selfstarter.co But if you still have some lingering questions, you can always message me on Instagram at that so Nick, and I would love to chat with you. Now moving on, let's get into those money regrets that I hope you won't end up making. Number one is using my shopping money to buy things over indulging in experiences. So basically back when we could travel, you know, back when that was a thing, you know, we would have our pocket money or we would have cash with us so that we could shop. But I realized that I think like 90% of the stuff I bought whenever I would go to different countries or different places, it would be like souvenirs or things I've always wanted to buy. But then that 90% would just end up not being used that much. And looking back at it, like I wish I just used that money for more experiences in that country or in that foreign place that I haven't been to. Because I feel like those kinds of experiences would be more memorable than shopping for that year or having that intense shopping spree at Sephora, you know, even those like souvenirs, those ref magnets. I really value more having experiences with your loved ones or also cherishing those learnings that you can only have in those specific places. Even the time when I went on a spontaneous hike in Bali or when I visited a loved one in New Jersey or I finally saw a real life panda when I was in Taiwan, like those things are like it just makes me smile looking back at it. Think about how you can put that money aside for having spontaneous trips or maybe going to a different route that just for fun and not being so held up on buying this thing that can only be found here or getting a souvenir so that you always have something to remember by. But the greatest memory that you can ever have is cherishing that experience, being in that moment. And that is something that you will never regret. Second thing, Dialing it back to the Philippines, I actually regret hoarding clothes from Tai Tai and Green Hills. I had a phase wherein I was like, I don't need to buy expensive clothes. My 1,000 pesos could take me a long way if I just buy from Green Hills or Tai Tai. It's really kind of addicting because you can buy a lot of pieces and then you just spend little amount versus if you usually go to like branded stores or department stores right but what i realized is that quality is always better than quantity i just remember i wanted to buy trendy clothes from Tai Tai because i had the bali trip and i just wanted something different half of the things i bought there is a struggle to wear now because it's like ripped in places or it's not as comfortable as i thought it was i realized that even if i was able to buy so much with just a thousand pesos because it's like not usable anymore like literally butas na guys it's better to invest in the quality of clothes not in a shopping spree but maybe like you do like once in a quarter or you buy an item once a month like as long as you know that you really become intentional about this specific item not because like oh it's cute it's trendy like let me get that my lesson here is just to make sure that every single item that i buy i know that i can wear it again and again as much as i love budget finds like don't get me wrong i'm all for that but when you see it in the long term it's really not worth it third thing is 
trendy shoes that I rarely used, such as high heels. Uh, you know, the thing is, I've always I've had this realization, you know, and yet I keep falling for the same trap again and again and again. When you see a pair of heels that are on sale, that are cute, that when you wear it, you're like, you are dominating this world, you want to buy it. And then the moment you wear it for an actual occasion, you're like, why the hell did I buy this? I'm in pain. And sometimes I sucked it up. I'm like, I bought this. Even if I'm bleeding, even if I'm hurting, I will make this work. There were times that it actually worked out. I just needed to break into those shoes and I was able to wear it, so that happened. But there were times wherein I was just like, no, I can't. Tell me below if it's not just me because I'll feel a little bit better. For me, you just really waste money if you don't make the most out of what you actually bought. And this is one of those things. And it just reminds me that whenever I buy something, I need to really think about how often will I actually use it. And that's how it's really going to be of value to my lifestyle. The next two things, it's more of money habits that I regret. That I wish you'll also get some tips from. And number four is I regret tracking my expenses daily. So there was a time when I started working that I was just like, I'm gonna be a responsible adult. I'm gonna track every single thing up to the banana queue that I bought, up to the piece of a barbecue that I bought during merienda time, you know? And honestly, it drove me crazy. I don't think I even lasted for like three months or something because I felt like a control freak. You forgot to do this. You shouldn't do this. Like I felt like I was parenting myself when in fact, I should be giving myself the breathing room that I can, I'm finally working. I should feel like I can make my own decisions because I am earning my own money now. You know, one way or the other, it's either you super overspend when you start working or you become super, 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 super creep to yourself that you don't enjoy life. You don't spend your money like it should be spent. Instead of that, so what I'm doing right now, I digitally track everything so most of the time when i have to spend on something i use my credit card because my credit card billing statement would be able to enumerate my expenses for me i don't need to watch my back watch my every little finger to see what i spent every single second which is very time consuming and not efficient for you to do if i won't be able to use my credit card i have my gcash um, for cash as payments or if I do need to use cash, let's say um, when I pay for my laundry service or when I buy my water refills, like they don't have cashless options. So I just make sure that when I budget my money every single month, I also place a portion there, which is my pocket money. So it's basically my cash inside my wallet that I can use for instances when you need cash. And so it's easy for you to document your expenses, manage it, track it in real time on your phone, and you won't have to go crazy um, tracking your merienda on an Excel sheet. Fifth thing is that this is something that I was like, yeah, this would have saved me a lot of money if I was just more patient and I just made time for this, which is that I really regret avoiding calling customer service. You know when you have like a billing issue with your glow plan or you've been wanting to downgrade a certain subscription and you're just like, I'll do it later and then you forget about it and then you realize it's been a year and you have just spent so much on this subscription or on this plan, you could have saved a lot of money if you only just put into your schedule that you will call customer service to either reduce your plan or complain about this um, additional billing because I feel like with my phone bill because I feel like sometimes there would be additional costs with my glow bill that I could have asked about so that I know how to reduce it or maybe it was just a glitch in their system even my global Wi-Fi plan I used to have a 2499 globe Wi-Fi plan because I convinced myself that I really needed um, 50 Mbps Wi-Fi for a solo person living in a studio condo or I could have done enough research to know that I don't really need that big of a plan or also in general not maximizing my subscriptions because there are times when I would buy one year worth of subscription like it's a one-time payment for the whole year once that subscription ended I was like I had that I didn't even use that. I highly suggest you guys that you just go through your current subscriptions, your current plans right now because you could be saving money instead of 
it going down the drain. And I am more patient now with asking customer service, clarifying with customer service, asking more questions because at the end of the day, it saves you money and it's just part of being an adult. No one else is gonna call customer service for you. So you have to do it and it helps you manage your time and money in the long run. You can also catch up on my previous video on the five steps on how I built my six figure savings at 25. I'm spilling all the secrets there as well as in-depth information about the bootcamp that you are also going to be pumped about. So I will see you there.